The following is a presentation of TFNN. Time to talk about your health. Living a primal lifestyle with your hosts, Nico and Ellen DeHaan. Now, Nico and Ellen DeHaan. Good morning, I'm Nico DeHaan. Welcome to Living a Primal Lifestyle, where we explore a return to a more balanced and natural wild world. To recover our natural health and regain our rights and freedoms. Good and, morning, I'm Ellen DeHaan. And it's a beautiful morning in downtown St. Petersburg, 77 degrees, clear skies, and... Uh, Wind is out of the northeast, now east-northeast, okay. Yeah. Looks nice. Feels good. Feels good. Yep. Mm -hmm. I'd like to remind you, first of all, to pick up our Primal Edge, our one-shot wonder. It's uh, over 310 organic cell-ready liquid ingredients, so it's easy to take. And very important during this time when we have these uh, viruses going around and go coming into the flu season now. So fulvic and humic acid are the things that is kind of the delivery system that gets the good stuff in. And it gets all the bad stuff out. Yeah, and it's only $89 to your door every single month. And, of course, we have our... Health Signals newsletter, which follows the show. So the articles for the past two weeks are in there. You can make your own decisions on, uh, you know, reading those things and deciding what the heck is going on. <laughs> and what is going on? I want to talk about what is real food and what is not real food. And uh, I like this article, and it was written quite a few years ago. Uh, it was I found it on the cheeseslave.com, and I've been holding it because I really like this this subject, and I really like the way she explains it. She says, it's simple, uh, like a simple question, but many of us have significant lifestyle changes in order for us to eat real food. See, so what is real food? Well, it's simply the food that people consumed until the very recent past. Mm -hmm. Pretty simple, and I kind of agree with that because I think at our age, being in our 70s, that we have seen the big change. Yeah, we were talking the other day about how lucky we were to have grown up when we did. Mm -hmm. I mean, even though the, the box cereals came in and so on, the food was at least not as, uh, not as processed and not as uh, treated and not as genetically modified. Well, it wasn't genetically right. modified. Yeah. And, and in many ways we ate, and, and it was a lot of local. And uh, so, so we ate as children a little bit better maybe than... I think I would say a lot better because I remember seeing the first A&W in Canada mm -hmm. uh, coming, and that was in the uh, early 60s, I right. think. Uh, the first and, McDonald's. Yeah, first McDonald's on Grand River Avenue in Detroit. I remember seeing that. So, uh, and it's grown from there. Uh, I saw the restaurants change. We talked that, about that a couple of weeks ago, that the restaurants on the little roads going through town were a lot different than the freeways that came later on. Mm -hmm. Uh, they were all generic, where the ones that were going through little towns, you had a little bit of culture going along with them because those people were feeding what they were feeding their families, pretty and, much. And it was regional as well. You That's know? right. So you could, you could figure if you were in, uh, in Michigan, you would get a certain type of food. If you're in Alabama, you're going to get a different kind of food. Yeah. And, and, and that, now, was, that was really nice. All the I restaurants thought. are... Or chains, really, a lot of them are chains. Pretty much in the, when you go uh, to s even malls and things like that, right. which, which may be a, 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 a thing of the past. Who knows? Yeah. But uh, We haven't been to a mall in a long no, time. No, we haven't been yeah. anywhere, really. Yeah, that's one good point. <laughs> <laughs> so what is real food? Real food is basically food you can grow, food from pasture-fed animals, food that hasn't been processed, refined, or synthesized, and food that has not been genetically modified. Yeah. And, and so that, what does that mean, actually, you know, when you think about it, you have to read the labels on all the boxes, you know, anything mm -hmm. that you buy in a box or anything that you buy that's processed is full of preservatives and hormones and uh, antibiotics and uh, a lot, pretty much all the soy products you can buy in this country are genetically modified. Yeah, and they're also mass produced. And it says here that mass produced foods uh, not only often involve inhumane practices, but also devalue the final product by, by decreasing the nutritional content. And I think that's really important. And they mention here the contribution of Weston A. Price, uh -huh. which was a dentist in the 1920s, and he was noticing the change in the people's teeth 
because but he of the also, lack of nutrition. And their health in general. Uh, yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. And he, mm-hmm. he figured that that was tied to, you know, the teeth were tied to the whole nutritional value of that uh, client or yeah, that person. And he, he tied a... He, he, he hypothesized that maybe it had something to do with the industrial food practices. Right. The way the food is being processed, the way the, the things that were being... You know, we talked, I think it was last week, we were talking about milks. Yes. And, and we were talking about that they had to fortify the milk because in the processing, they took out the nutrients right. and the vitamins right. and the things that, that were the good stuff. In the and milk. the reason for that is they're using extrusion, they're, they're using high pressure, they're using heat, which breaks down these nutrients, mm-hmm. uh, nutrients I should say. Mm-hmm. So he actually wanted to uh, find out what the heck was going on. And the way he determined whether people were healthy or not is if they were untouched by the new processes of food. In other words, people who were still eating nose to tail from the farm. Right, and so he went looking for those people because he wasn't finding them in his practice or in his area. Right, so he went all over the world and found indigenous people still hunter and gatherers, and what he found were people who were really had great teeth, big wide smiles, big jaws. Uh, They were very healthy people. Well, in addition to that, they had very low numbers of diabetes, cancer, heart disease, and, and all of the other things that seem to be inherent in industrialized nations. Yes. These far healthier societies, the people ate real food. The people, the food that the humans com- uh, consumed and prepared for thousands of years were enzyme rich, fermented food, mm-hmm. unprocessed and unrefined food that did not come in a can. Right. And at that time, that's when the canning really started. Around the turn of the 1900s, that's when canning was first revolutionized. People started canning things. Well, buying you, you could go in the supermarket and buy something in a can. Yeah, where before that you really couldn't. Well, there, yeah, they were, the open they, markets, well, which had their challenges as well. Yeah. You know, but, but it was, at least it was fresh food that you could see and touch and smell and, and determine was was in good shape and this way what you get in a can you don't know what you're getting in. yeah the author asks the question here why should we why should you care our bodies function better on real food rather than the denatured addictive and healthy faith uh, unhealthy unhealthy, faith. unhealthy faith, faith, fake food hard to say but <laughs> easy to eat yeah and then uh, fake food that leads to heart disease, diabetes, obesity, and yeah. they're harder to process. And the author here also says that she used to suffer from gluten intolerance, uh, chronic fatigue syndrome, adrenal exhaustion, and multiple chemical sensitivities, along with chronic uh, sinus infections and seasonal allergies. On top allergies. Of that, allergies. And on top of that, she had rheumatoid arthritis. So she, when she started eating, you know, was she picking, choosing what she's eating, nutrient-rich foods and not processed foods and foods that came were, were really real foods that she's talking about, yeah. the pasture raised and the... And, uh, yeah, and it's an interesting story of how, how these changes took place. So when we get back from our break, we're going to go into the story of one of these manufacturing companies that really changed the way we eat and the way we think about food. So stick around for that. Uh, in the meantime, we want you to pick up the Primal Edge, our One Shot Wonder, and, of course, the Health Signals newsletter, which is $10 a month. You get it on the 1st and the 15th of every month. And we'll be right back. Introducing Primal Edge. Today, it's even more important to take a supplement that complements your health. Primal Edge is specifically formulated to boost your immune system and help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Our early ancestors found all their nutritional requirements in the wild environment. But today, our food sources don't contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients that we need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based, vitamins, minerals, fatty and amino acids in an easy to use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated humic and fulvic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air and water, without them life cannot exist. That's right, Ellen. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We We take take it it every morning. morning. Primal Edge, just $89 exclusively at TFNN.com. 
TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. And we've talked a lot about real foods and in our shows, and, and uh, we also talk a lot about fats and the healthy um, the contribution that fats make to our health and our well-being. And, and, and that you found this wonderful article on the rise and fall of Crisco. You know, we had Crisco in my house when I was growing up. It was always in the house. And I, I knew nothing about it. And uh, I'm looking at the article, and it says the, the story of Crisco started in pre-Civil War America. A candle maker, William Proctor, and his brother-in-law, soap maker, James Gamble, Procter and Gamble, right. and they joined together because they were competing with 14 other soap and candle makers in Cincinnati, Ohio. Procter and Gamble entered the shortening business because in the 1890s, meatpacking monopoly was controlling the price of lard and tallow that they had previously used to make candles and soap. Right. And so then uh, Procter and Gamble took steps to gain control over the cottonseed oil business from farm to factory, and by 1905, they owned eight cotton seed mills in Mississippi. Then in 1907, with the help of a German chemist, Procter & Gamble developed the science of hydrogenation. 1907. By, that's by adding hydrogen atoms to the fatty acid chain, and this makes the cottonseed oil, which is a liquid uh, solid, right. which resembles lard. Right. <clears throat> now, this is really important because, uh, first of all, they also classified the uh, the plant as a vegetable. Cotton seed. Well, cotton. Cotton. Yeah, the cotton a plant. Vegetable. Well, it's you know it's vegetation. Oh yeah. But vegetables are it's really known that we eat them. We yeah. don't we don't okay. go out in the woods and look for vegetables. Uh -huh. That's where vegetation is. Right. So we've always used the term vegetation. Uh, as a different thing than vegetables. Mm -hmm. Vegetables are things that we eat. They're we plants eat. we grow specifically to exactly. eat. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's different than the wild things. Right. And we've made them different because we were always making them sweeter, mm -hmm. making them easier to Bigger. handle, things like that. Mm -hmm. So they started using this product and they got it by the FDA uh, and they called it a CRISPO that didn't really go over too well. The next try they called it CRIST and finally they ended up on the name of CRIST. Crisco, because it was a crystallized cottonseed oil. And it was introduced huh. to the public in 1911. And it was an era when wives stayed home and cooked with plenty of butter and lard. And the challenge for Crisco was to convince the staying at home 
housewife about the merits of this imitation food. They introduced this all-vegetable shortening as a healthier alternative to cooking with animal fats. It's more economical, it's a lot cheaper, cheaper than and butter. also it doesn't smell up the house like lard does. You uh -huh. know, when we cook on Fridays with our lard, uh -huh. we notice the smell, we kind of like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, they, <laughs> did, uh, they vilified that. Well, then, <clears throat> apparently, it was an uphill battle to get everybody to switch from lard and butter mm -hmm. to uh, Crisco. So they came up with a cookbook. Yes, they gave away this cookbook. This was one of the first cookbooks along with Betty Crocker later on that really showed people recipes that had these ingredients. Yeah. So in other words, when you saw a recipe, you didn't see lard anymore or you didn't see butter anymore. You saw Crisco. So naturally, you would say, hey, you know, let's use Crisco. It doesn't smell as bad. It's much healthier for us. They told us so. Yeah, well, it had 615 recipes, and on the cover of the, of the book, it says Crisco for frying, for shortening, for cake making. Yeah. And they just pushed it as, they also claimed that it was healthy, and it was, um, it, it was a really masterful sales presentation. The story of Crisco is recognized as a classic and subtle art of persuasion. Its language and contextual variety uh, representative of the pre-World War II social... World War I. Uh, World War I social mi milieu. milieu. Uh, they reflect the urbanization, domestication, and commercialization, and education, or lack of, of simple sophistication of the times. This was when we were going to be more economical, more enlightened, more modern. Well, that was the thing. Yeah, yes. it was going to be the newest, oh, this is this, a new this, thing. We're this in the space is... race, baby, you know, and now in the 50s, and this is when I first got a hold of it. My mother gave me this white block of that kind of looked like white butter, but it didn't look like butter because it wasn't yellow, but it had this little tab on it. And this was a tab of coloring. And when you smashed it all in, it would look like butter because that's where the dye was. And so what was before, it? It was just a piece Oleo. of dye. Oleo. Yeah, it was what just... What was it? The... It was lard. Mard. Lard. Yeah. Okay. Basically, okay. well, Crisco. It was It was Crisco, yeah. which is not lard. Well, that's and that, exactly and right. That's a, yeah. I think that's And, the and that's where the mix-up is. Well, I think, and that was where the, the trick was. Yeah. You know, they were trying to make it look like lard yeah. and butter. Yeah, exactly. And so you uh, you say, oh, this is great. Look at this. You know, same thing with margarine. Yeah. 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 So the margarines were really white in the beginning, and that coloring was, they finally figured out later on how to put it in, in manufacturing. Right. So right. it would look like it right off the shelf. Yeah. But that was the switch. I, my mother made it, I remember. And all of a sudden, this thing, along with the cereals, made it very convenient for women to start working. Because now, all of a sudden, the Well, plates, they were working. Well, they were just cases. starting to work. Uh -huh. I, my mother had a little part-time job uh -huh. here and there. That's uh -huh. what immigrants did anyway. Uh -huh. But when the real thing was to working during the day, remember, uh, I remember my mother and father used to have little night jobs cleaning office buildings. So they'd be with us during the day. You know, at least mm -hmm. one of them would be. Mm -hmm. So it started later on in the 60s that my mother was always working because she needed to do something. Right. When, you know, too many of the women that were, were being raised in those days were had very active minds, active intelligence, good skills, and they needed more than just sitting, being at home, and uh, yeah. especially when the children went to school. Now, the other thing is that in the beginning, we really didn't know that this was not good for us. In fact, right. Crisco didn't know. Procter, Procter and Gamble right. didn't know this was. But later on... Well, wait one second. Okay. Let's back up just a second. We're talking about cottonseed oil. We don't eat cotton. No. We don't eat the cotton plant. Right. And cottonseed is, yeah, it's an oil. But the question is, is it something we can digest? That's the problem. And right does there. it hurt? Yeah. And does it cause a problem in, once it gets inside? Right. And well, those are the things we, they, we didn't know. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it didn't have any taste, so it was okay. And the FDA said it was all right. Yeah. So later on, uh, so uh, you know, but when reports began to appear, problems like increased heart disease, increased cancer, growth problems, uh, learning disorders, infertility, problem, uh, Procter and Gamble worked behind the scenes to cover them up. Well, it's a hydrogenated fat, and it's a trans fatty acid, as it turned out. Yeah. And it's really only very recently that we've discovered the the. the the danger of trans fats. Well, they really talked about it in the 80s. 
you know, that's that's when it really became but more vilified. Beca yeah. But it became more... But remember, before that, it was the saturated fat that was considered mm -hmm. bad. Mm -hmm. the, this was the clogging thing. They, they would say, look at it, it's solid. Yeah. Well, the oils aren't solid. Right. But then they made the, so the oils no, they look like they solid. They hydrogenated them. <laughs> yeah, right. It doesn't make any sense, does it? Uh -uh -uh. Okay. Um, the other thing is, besides all the possible health risks of uh, hyd uh, hydrogenation, I believe another compelling reason to avoid Crisco was just before the harvest, cottonseed plants were sprayed with a strong defoliation chemical to make the leaves fall off, so it was easier to, to pick and easier to, to clean them. The cotton bowls? Is that what you're talking about here? Yeah, I think so. Uh, type the words cotton and defoliation into the, your browser and you'll be as amazed at all the different things that are in there about this. So when we get back, we'll, get, we'll, we'll go on with this. Oh. Yeah, it goes fast. <laughs> <laughs> We'd like to tell you about the personal training studio that Nico is the owner and president of, Performance Training. Since 1998, Nico has trained individuals and groups to improve their health both mentally and physically. As a certified personal trainer, Nico's main focus is on demonstrating exercises correctly to avoid injury and teaching his clients how to manage their past injuries while getting the most out of their personal training sessions. The Performance Training Studio is filled with unique training equipment that enhances balanced results at a faster rate while minimizing damage and discomfort. For more information, you can give Nico a call at 727-418-8740 or email him at nico at tfnn.com. Let him know you heard him on TFNN and save up to $100 on a special package just for TFNN listeners. Act today. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. So we're talking about fat, and uh, this uh, particular article comes from uh, WebMD.com, and this is a kind of article that kind of has half-truths in it. So they tell part of the story, but they really don't go into details, and that's why I think gets, things get confusing, especially when you talk about fats. Yeah, they, uh, there's good fats, there's bad fats. These are just words, and really what we're looking for is 
it, the article talks about the fact that we need fat, th that our brains need the fat, that our bodies need the fat. It keeps our skin soft, that it delivers. There are a number of vitamins that are what we call fat-soluble versus water-soluble. Yeah. And uh, those you know, deliver, and they're a source of fuel. Yeah, and it's easy to get confused about good fats versus bad fats. How much fat should we eat? Uh, how to avoid the artery-clogging trans fats? And what is the role of omega-3 fatty acids play? Of course, fat has been vilified uh, from the 1940s after the... World War II, uh, the trans fats have been uh, vilified, of course, which they should be. The trans fats are those uh, ones we just talked about with the Crisco. Right. Uh, but also saturated fats have been put in that same lump, lump because trans fats are saturated. But that doesn't mean that all saturated fats are bad. In right. fact, pretty much human beings have been raised on saturated fat for a million years, you would say, yeah. because animals have saturated fat in them. They have other fats, too. And hydrogenated is the uh, solidified fats. Yeah. So. so one of the questions here, does dietary fat make you fat? And it says that says uh, diet plays, uh, di uh, dietary fat plays a significant role in obesity. Fat is calorie dense, nine calories per gram. So it's larger molecule than carbs or protein, which only have four uh, calories per gram. Alcohol has about seven. It's a little bit different. It's easy to overeat fats because they lurk in many foods. I would say it's uh, easier to overeat carbohydrates. There are some fats in these, some of these foods, but they're a lot like French fries. Huh. Uh, the only fats we're really concerned about in French fries are the fats they're fried in. The oils. The yeah. oils, yeah. Mm -hmm. Fr French fries really aren't the greatest thing, but if you take a real nice, thin, crispy one that's fried in lard, I would say that's not a bad thing. Yeah. It's not the most healthy thing in the world, but it's not <laughs> going to kill you. Yeah. Uh, well, so, uh, some people I do have a, 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 a sensitivity to potatoes. Oh, sure. So that's, yeah. that's a whole other yeah, thing. Yeah, but so. it's the fried foods that they talk about yeah. that are so bad for you probably wouldn't be so bad for if you. If they were fried if, in. If they were fried in lard instead of oh. cottonseed oil yeah. or uh, soy oil, which is uh, prominent. Or a lot of people use peanut oil because it doesn't have a lot of taste. Uh, it may be a little bit healthier, but probably not because well, they're all pretty much rancid when you eat them, and that's well, the problem also with them. Well, peanuts, a number of people have a, some kind of sensitivity to peanuts, to peanuts which too. is something that has to be thought about as that's well. That's for sure. Yeah. The, uh, the interesting thing here, though, is that fats also appear in, in processed food. You know, if you look at lunch meat, you can see the fats in them, right. and, uh, but also in cake and cookies and ice cream and yeah, so when I think of processed foods, I don't think so much about the processed meats like sausages that are maybe traditional in a Polish sausage mm -hmm. or in a German sausage or an Italian mm -hmm. sausage or whatever. Mm -hmm. I think more along the lines of the cereals, the cakes, the cookies, and all these chips and everything. The, mm -hmm. These are the ones that are based with carbohydrates, and then they're using bad fat right. on top of it. And I think the combination is yeah, what we're talking about. Yeah, exactly. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, excessive carbohydrates are a problem. Remember that? Proteins are very important because they need to be pristine, they need to be complete, mm -hmm. and these are the building blocks of life. This mm -hmm. is what we're made out of. The other two ingredients that we talk about, the macronutrient ingredients, are fats and carbohydrates. They're the fuels. Mm -hmm. Carbohydrates burn very quickly. They are stored very fast if they're uh, highly processed because our body can't absorb them fast enough, they, they kind of put them in fat cells, where fats are pretty much burned most of the time, unless they're toxic type of fats like the trans fats, and then they can clog things up. So there's a lot of misinformation about good fats, bad fats, carbohydrates, things like that. You really have to dig into it and understand that our ancestors ate a lot of fat. They ate, uh -huh. uh, they ate uh -huh. the animal from head to toe, and therefore they ate the organs and the blood, and there's lots of fat there. And they and, ate the fat first, and the organs sure. first. And, and they so would carry they... it off if they would leave the meat if they were under stress, yeah. because that's how important they knew where it came from. Because if remember, out in the wild, there's not a lot of carbohydrates. Those vegetables don't grow out there. We have to grow them, and there's no grains out there, unless they're just really ramped it in an orchard, uh, a little place here or there. Mm -hmm. So it's the, the problem is, is the combination of the two and the type. So the unsaturated fats or the saturated fats are not as important as what kind of fat is it. 
So we should talk a little bit about what the difference between saturated fats, unsaturated fats, and then we have the polyunsaturated fats, and then we have the monounsaturated fats also. So it can get a little bit confusing, but mostly if you're talking about saturated fats, you're talking pretty much about either animals or mm -hmm. some of the uh, oils that are in the tropics, like palm oil and coconut oil. Those mm -hmm. are the saturated fats. They have the fats that are still solid when it's warm out. Right. Pretty much. The other ones are the ones that are liquid. And you would think the liquid, you know, would be easier to get into the body, but that's not the case. They actually turn rancid and they get some more solid in us. So uh, that's the bigger problem with it. Well, they say polyunsaturated fats are found in vegetable oils. They do help lower blood cholesterol levels and triglyceride levels. Yeah, and that's part of the stuff that's kind of disinformation. Yeah, because... Because vegetable oils aren't the kind of oils you want. That's the yeah. problem in a society, folks. And it's the seed oils, too. Yeah. Uh, some of the seed oils that have been traditionally used for years and years, like sesame seed oil, may not be as bad. But if you're using them continuously, you know, like olive oil, if you're using, you're using a real high-quality olive oil, you don't use it for heating. You use maybe a, uh, uh, an extra virgin one that's been... You know, uh, some of the uh, some of the real sensitive oils have been skimmed off, so you can actually heat it up. Yeah, well, the, and I think that's an important point to make because the heating, the the smoke rating of the oils right. very is important is very important because if you're trying to cook on high heat with a lot of the olive oils out there. You can't, it, you can't. It's bad for you because it turns the oil and the heat. It's not made for high heat. Yeah. So you have to, and a lot of in Italy they'll use butter and things like that and mm -hmm. add the oil at the very end. At the very end. end. Yeah. So not to make it rancid. So mm -hmm. important to realize. Although you have some versions of these oil, like the the more they're processed, the more they can actually be in heat. So if they're extra virgin, it can be heated a certain amount, but not a lot. And we have some more information on that in another article. But just to kind of go also in this article, they talk about the omega-3s. Yeah. Now, I take omega-3 oil twice a day. Mm hmm and I, and I take my CBDs, which yeah. is the... I remember that these omega-3 oils are for cold water fish. So just think about it. If it's not in your refrigerator, it's probably too warm for it and will also turn rancid at room temperature unless it's got something like turmeric in it to stop that process. Mm -hmm. Most of these oils, and you have to be very careful, just buying it at Walgreens off the shelf, right. you're probably not getting an oil that is very good anymore because it sits on the shelf for a little while and goes rancid. So it needs to be protected that way. We'll be right back, folks. Stick around. Introducing Primal Edge. Today, it's even more important to take a supplement that complements your health. Primal Edge is specifically formulated to boost your immune system and help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Our early ancestors found all their nutritional requirements in the wild environment. But today, our food sources don't contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients that we need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based, vitamins, minerals, fatty and amino acids in an easy to use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated humic and fulvic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air and water, without them life cannot exist. That's right, Ellen. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every morning. morning. Primal Edge, just $89 exclusively at tfnn.com. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. 
The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And welcome back. And we're uh, discussing now the best and worst oils for your health. And this comes from Time Magazine. Uh, home cooks have plenty of options when it comes to choosing the oil to saute, bake, drizzle with. Some, are, some like olive oil, some like avocado oil, some like coconut oil, and some are less familiar, which oil is right for you. So let's go through this. Uh, olive oil is number one here. They say uh, nutrition and cooking experts agree is one of the most versatile oils and healthy oils to cook with and to eat as long as it's extra virgin. Apparently the extra virgin uh, has a lower uh, rate of... Uh, has uh, a higher... Has a higher one? Yeah. A that's higher what I said? smoke point. Okay, yeah. it has a higher smoke point. That's mm -hmm. what I said. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it gets confusing. Yes, it does. <laughs> uh, but... Uh, Olive oil has a relatively lower smoke point compared to other oils, so it's best for low and medium heat cooking. Right. There are a couple articles I've read that it's good for high heat even. So, well, I mean, and you see it, it on the cooking shows, you know, people yeah. are just throwing olive oil into the pan. Yeah, and, uh, and but we don't, we don't do that. No. Yeah. No. Coconut oil, uh, and that's relatively new on the scene. Coconut oil and palm oil for a long time, because of their saturated fat content, were very much vilified. Now with the paleo movement and the ketone type of movement, mm -hmm. it's kind of reversed again. So it is a good oil to cook with. We've used it in the past. We use it now and then. We tend to most of the time use lard. Yes. And I use a little bit of butter now, now and then. You don't use butter because you're allergic to butter. Yeah, but I do use the avocado oil for my eggs. Yes. I put, I put about a teaspoon of um, macadamia nut oil, mm -hmm. and then I add about a tablespoon of avocado oil into yeah. my pan. Both monounsaturated fats. And they taste delicious. Mm -hmm. They have a rich uh, buttery flavor, and, and the eggs are delicious when mm -hmm. I cook them with that yeah. for me. In this article it says our bodies do need some saturated fat but the industry has a good, good job to make it a superfood. I think it is a superfood in a sense. Uh, maybe it's, not yeah. the uh, coconut oil and palm oil as much but certainly the lard from pigs and tallow from the cows. And the and natural the fat that's on the meat when you right. eat it. Yeah, it's, yeah, this is why we love the meat. It's mm -hmm. not because of the protein. Right now, and, and I was asking you. I was looking at all these lists of oils: canola oil and palm oil, and and um, uh, avocado oil, and so on. And, on. and then they had this category called vegetable oil. And I <laughs> said, "What the heck is vegetable oil?" Well, I found this article says that it's a term that's used to refer to any oil that comes from plant sources. And the most of the vegetable oils in the market are a blend of canola, 
corn, soybean, safflower, palm, and sunflower oils. Mm -hmm. So, Gener you know. Gener we, it says here, generally, I tell people to use olive oil whenever you can instead of corn or soybean oil. It's not necessarily bad for you, uh, but you get more benefit out of the uh, soybean or out of the olive oil. I would say, yeah, it is bad. So soybean oil, especially corn yes. oil, because it's a GMO, first of all. Right. Uh, I don't think these are good oils to you put in your diet. So I would re recommend not using them. And, uh, you know, the real popular one like Wesson oil and Crisco mm -hmm. oil and all these things, stay away from those things. Uh, if you're going to use a uh, good uh, oil, use an olive oil and get it from uh, an Italian market or something, okay. somewhere you, where you well, know. Well, when I do my baking, because I can't do butter, mm -hmm. <clears throat> I do uh, half safflower and half olive yeah. oil. A little safer to use those and, things. And uh, it works out extremely well. Yeah. The next one in line is called the canola oil, and this comes from a plant called the rapeseed or the rapeseed. It's a flowering plant. It contains uh, a good amount of monounsaturated fats and a decent amount of polyunsaturated fats. Uh, of all the uh, vegetable oils, canola oil tends to be uh, the least amount of saturated fat, which they point out. It really doesn't mean that much to me. This is a highly, highly processed. Remember that a wrap seed we don't eat. We don't eat those seeds. We don't eat the plant at all. It's kind of like the cotton seed oil it comes from a plant we don't eat, and they call it vegetable all of a sudden. Well, they say they do recommend if you can find cold pressed or unprocessed canola oil, that that would be better. But it's, they also point out it's very difficult to find that. Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> you know, these, a lot of these oils were used in industry for ball bearings, and they figured out, well, you know, now they're starting to use Crisco and stuff. Let's see if we can use these other oils, too. <laughs> That's where they come up with a lot of these things. Avocado oil is mentioned here. It's a great choice. It's unrefined like uh, extra virgin uh, olive oil, but it's a higher smoking point, which means it's easier to cook with. Well, it cooks at higher heat, and it's good for stir-frying. And it's uh, very creamy tasting, so it, it has a lot of body to it. And uh -huh. so it does have good. The, the one downside to that is that it is expensive. Well, it tends to be more expensive. Yeah. But I, because I use a little of it, yeah. you know, it's not a problem. Yeah. Then you have sunflower oil. This is uh, an oil that's uh, touted to be high in vitamin E. Uh, one tablespoon, in other words, contains 28% of your daily recommended intake. It also contains a lot of omega-6 fatty acids. Now, omega-6 are the ones that we want in a balance with omega-3s. Yeah, because too much omega-6 is inflammatory. Yeah, and yeah. We, we want omega-6, but it's at a higher ratio than 3 to 1 uh, with the uh, omega-3. Mm -hmm. It gets to be a problem for us, and it becomes uh, more of an irritant in yeah, the sense. Yeah, inflammatory. Yeah, inflammatory. And, yeah, and meanwhile, omega-3 is anti-inflammatory, so now you got things warring it with each other. Yeah. And peanut oil is listed in here. Uh, like uh, It's fun to experiment with it in the kitchen. We don't use it. Uh, I have a kind of allergy to peanut oil, uh, all, or to peanuts, but it doesn't seem to bother me in the oil. Uh -huh. But it's still not a very good one. The only reason that people use it, it was really not too bad in high heat. It works pretty right. well in high heat. Uh -huh. Then they have things like uh, walnut oil. They have flaxseed oil, sesame oil. Sesame oil I use a lot. It in contains both mono and polyunsaturated fats. Uh, it doesn't really have high nutrition, but has a high smoke point. Uh -huh. So when I was frying rice back in the 60s, I would use that. And it has a nice little taste to it, too. And uh, I've often used sesame oil for the oil pulling that we used yes. to do. Yes, yes. still do sometimes. Uh -huh. Yeah, sesame oil. It does have a strong flavor, too. So, yeah. Uh, you know, I, when I'm using the oils, I'm trying to get, I want the benefits but I don't necessarily want the flavors. Yeah. You know, if I'm, well, I'm making brownies or something, I don't really want a sesame oil in there. Yeah, yeah, too, too strong. Too strong. So uh, my recommendation is get back to what our uh, ancestors did with the lard and the tallow. Mm -hmm. If you can find them, there's lots of good sources, a lot of restaurant chain uh, supply companies sell big tubs of lard. I bought this big 40, five gallon, five gallon, whatever it was. It was only 40 <laughs> bucks. It lasts a couple of years. A lot cheaper yeah. than the oil. A lot better. Uh, tastes a lot better. That's for sure. And it has the nutrition in well, it. Well, the one want. thing we found when we started uh, making it, you bought the deep fryer because we thought that we do enjoy like deep fried wings or yeah, something like that. Great. And, and we uh, finally figured out that not to put any breading or anything on them, mm -hmm. just, just fry them. 
We, it turns out that, that they are absolutely delicious and juicy and yeah. and tender and and it's an easy way to cook and and uh, we, we use the lard for that. Yeah. And it makes a big and I find even though ordinarily if you eat a big plate of fried wings. You feel heavy and, and stuffed and uncomfortable. This way Not we go. with the lard and That's right, and it makes this, a big difference. It's, it's very nice. Okay, folks, we'll be right back. Stick around. Back in the day, I joined the Hotel California in 2006, and like many of you, was drawn in by, as well as, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. You see, I believe that everything in life happens for us, not to us, and Tom ignited the fire within me to want to learn how to master the markets. So how did I go from knowing nothing about technical analysis to becoming the number one market timer for the S&P 500 in 2018 and the number two market timer in 2019? Simply put, I hired coaches with a proven track record, which led me to a whole new set of tools that I created to interpret the message of buyers and sellers. I would love the opportunity to teach you this award-winning set of tools and to help you improve your market timing. You can test drive my newsletter service, Mastering Probabilities, for the next 30 days with no risk to you. Plus, you'll gain access to archive workshops that'll take you step-by-step -step through my system. Sign up today by going to the homepage of TFNN.com and selecting Mastering Probability in the newsletter tab. folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN has developed a daily programming lineup for traders by traders. We start every trading day live at 8.30 a.m. with Tommy O'Brien hosting the morning market kickoff as he starts the day off by breaking down everything you need to know about what's going on for the trading day ahead. At the 9 a.m., Larry Pesavento takes your calls Network. and questions live on the air for the opening bell as he hosts Trade What You See. At 10 a.m., Tom and Tommy O'Brien host the Bull Bear Trading Hour. At 11 a.m., it's Kevin Hanks and Alex Coffey from TD Ameritrade Network with Fast Market, Basil Chapman at noon with the Tiger Technicians Hour, Steve Rhodes hosts the Trader's Edge at 1 p.m., Dave White with the Power Trading Hour at 2 p.m., and Tom O'Brien closes out the day for the final hour of trading live from 3 till 4. Don't miss a second of our daily programming lineup. Tune in to Tiger TV every trading day live at TFNN.com educating investors hey welcome back to the show uh, it's time for daylight savings time pretty soon uh, november 1st november yeah. yeah. two o'clock in the morning on november 1st for the eastern it uh, seems like this is unnecessary anymore i mean how many people are out there farming this is where it was really originated for for the farmers uh, I mean, can't the farmers keep, keep their own time? I mean, <laughs> what's the problem here? I don't get it. But uh, well, I, I, a lot, you know, a lot well. of companies now have, uh, a lot of countries now are talking about, in fact, they have a uh, little chart for chart the Europeans, here. yeah. How many people want to, I don't know how they gauge this, but 95% of Poland and Finland. Want to abolish daylight yeah. savings time. It would be nice. I mean, I don't know why we have to keep going back and forth. It uh, seems like easier to fall back than it does go forward. But yeah, I, they I, say the effect, one of the effects of daylight savings is the early part of the day is darker than usual, and the end of the day stays lighter than usual. And that's a problem because it disrupts your natural circadian rhythms, and it affects it's creating sleep disorders. Yeah. 
So mm -hmm. that's why they're concerned about it. Um, negative short-term consequences of the annual change in the spring. And then, uh, so they're looking to, to say, let's, let's not change it. Let's just leave it. Let's do a kind yeah. of a global the one con. The exceptions are China, India, Japan, and the state of Arizona. Yes. <laughs> I didn't and know Hawaii, that. I think, also. <laughs> Is it? If I'm not mistaken, Hawaii doesn't change either. Well, they're the smart ones as far as I'm concerned. I don't particularly like the change. I always thought that uh, where we are in Clearwater, Florida, St. Petersburg, that uh, we belong in central time in a sense. <laughs> well, a push of the panhandle of Florida is in central yeah. time. And, yeah, but I thought know. they should have extended it. But yeah. I guess the, doing part of the state is not a real good thing either. It's uh, a lot of problems. People have a problem with this. Uh, it you know bothers me for a couple of days. I think about it and then I forget about it. Well, so I not... love the fall when it falls back. Mm -hmm. That's what now because I gain an hour. Yeah. It's just the day is nice and leisurely, and, <laughs> and you have that extra hour. You know, the spring is yeah. a killer when it you get you lose the hour. I mean, it's just as bad as traveling across time zones and uh, losing your your uh, timing so losing it all and together. so don't lose your timing folks and get some good sleep and thanks for being with us and we'll see you next week bye bye If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. If you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Least Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. This is TFNN, the Tiger Financial News Network. TFNN, headline news update. Welcome, folks. We had the Dow Industrials finish down 408. NASDAQ down 192, S&P's off 39, gold. Gold contract down $2.10, trade 1904 an ounce. You had silver flat, $24.40 an ounce. Light sweet crude off 25 cents, $40.63 a barrel, notes and bonds. 10-year down five ticks, 138.29. The 30-year off 12 at 174.17 in King Dollar. King Dollar down 254 ticks, trading at 93.424. 
The, the euro is at 117, the yen is at 105 and a half, and the British pound is at 129 to one US dollar. We get over and take a look at the SPY first. What you're gonna see there's quite a reversal out here, folks, from the highs to the lows out here today. We had a high of the at 349.33, and in fact, it was uh, three or four points higher than that pre-market. That's when we got open. Uh, it's going right after the uh, swing point, and we do have a confirmed ABC structure down inside of the S&P. Uh, it blew out this uh, B point, which was established on a Thursday. You needed 60 million shares, and guess what? We got them. <laughs> you get 60. We needed 60 million 358,000 folks, and you get 60 million 474. Uh, so the bottom line is that that's saying that you get some follow through tomorrow on the way down. Uh, the A to B equals C to D is almost hit actually in, inside the SPY. We go to the NDX 100. I don't think we're going to have the volume for the ABC structure on the way down inside the NDX. We needed volume more than uh, 42 million. You only got 34 million. That being said, bottom line, when you get the S&P um, that wants to run down into those levels, I expect what you're going to see out here, we are going to get follow through to the downside. Gold, gold contract out here moved sideways out here today. Uh, we had gold uh, high of 1923, a low of 1900. You did 155,000 contracts. That's very light contract volume. Bottom line, um, you know, we'll see uh, how this bottom line hangs out at uh, the lower end of this consolidation that we've been in here is 1885. If we go over to King Dollar and we take a look at King Dollar, uh, having a hard time getting to higher price, but guess what? It keeps rejecting the lower price also. We got down to 93,214. You're at 93,433. And the number to keep your eye on is this 93,991 area. Have a great night, folks. Have a safe night. Come back and visit us tomorrow morning. Tommy kicks us off 8.30 in the morning. Morning market kickoff. Great show. Have a great one. Have a safe one, folks. Our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find market insights on the trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market.